of God today. The opportunity to be called Christian. To be a Christian is not decoration. To be a Christian is not famous most of the time. To be a Christian is to allow God to use you. And in using you, the plan might be good. In using you, the plan might be bad. Get it? That is called sometimes bad situation. Bad situation. But yes, God wants to use you. Okay? So, the Lord is preparing you for 2017. I want you to wake up and know that it is all not about you. It's because He wants to glorify 
himself through you, just like he did through Mary. Thank God Mary didn't have so many questions. I'm being curious. I begin to interrogate the angel and say, you will not go. You have to explain to me. But she believed. I want somebody to believe this morning. Let faith arise in you. Let faith arise in you. Because by his grace, regardless of what is happening right now, you're going to get there. By his grace, you will fulfill your destiny. Amen. By his grace, you will fulfill your purpose. Oh, 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 the sun so brightly shining It is the light of a Jesus Jesus for accepting this assignment and Lord we've made up my mind and our spirit and our soul to walk with your plan for our life even as we go in your word briefly we ask that you will speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus we ask the father you remove every weaknesses oh God we ask the father Lord you strengthen us in the place of struggle you strengthen us in the place that we are thinking we are not worthy you strengthen us, Lord, in the place of fear, in the place of tremble. You strengthen us and give us the boldness so that we know who we are in Christ and we can stand unto the purpose of God for our life and fulfill destiny. Thank you for the revelation of your word. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Hallelujah. Please turn with me quickly. The book of Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, the mystery. 
of the name Jesus. Matthew chapter 1, verse 22. We're going to read from 22 through 25. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child, and shall have, okay, bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, being interpreted God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had hidden him, and took unto him his wife. And if you are not, till she has brought forth a firstborn, as firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. That was how we come about the gift, the greatest gift to the whole world. Jesus. So, you and I have not believed an ordinary person. You and I have believed in the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You and I have come to know about this mysterious child called Jesus. The one that has come to fulfill mankind or to fulfill the purpose of God for mankind. I want us to see another prophecy in the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 11 to 12. In fact, let's read from verse 8. Luke chapter 2 from verse 8. It says, is that from verse 8? Sir? And they were in the same country, shepherd abiding in the field keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were so afraid. And the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring unto you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, Behold, I mean, in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a big wrap in sweating clothes, lying in a manger. Hallelujah. This mysterious son we are talking about is not even born in the greatest nursery or facility in the whole world. This mysterious child that we are talking about was born in a manger among sheep. Think about it if your wife is pregnant and about to go to bed and you were looking for an hospital to give birth and they keep telling you all the places are filled up and the only place available is among sheep. Some of us will tell the baby, hold on please, don't come yet. Don't come. Let's find a spot first. And that's why I tell you that there are some bad situations. Not that the situations were bad, but because we're human beings, we tend to look at it from the bad angle. And then we tag the situation, this is bad. If it's in America, somebody's going to tell, maybe Joseph will tell Mary, or Mary will tell Joseph, this is bad. But yet, because the Lord wants to prove his, himself in this world, to you and I, so that you, we will understand and know what it is to be called a Christian. Jesus, our Savior, was born in a manger, among sheep. Not a very cool place in our own language. Not that anything is wrong in being born in a manger, but somebody will have to crucify their husband. How come you didn't go there on time? Eh? You should have taken me to the hospital on time. Maybe we will have spot. I won't be in the manger or among sheep giving back. You know, being who we are as human beings. But Jesus was born in a manger. 
And the Bible says in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world. Get it? This is the reason why he came. This is the reason why he was allowed to be born in a manger, even when the inn were filled. It's because for God so loved the world. Remember when I said it's not about you? The purpose of God is not about you. The purpose of Jesus wasn't even about himself. The purpose of Mary was not about herself. It was because for God so loved the world. And he has to give his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus. That whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. The reason why Jesus came is because God loved the world. The reason why you exist might be for somebody else. From a wonderful man of God I have learned that when you see a perfect, well there's nothing called perfect, when you see a couple that is doing awesomely well, it's because that couple has come to realize that the reason why the husband is in that relationship is for the wife. And the reason why the wife is in that relationship is for the husband. It is not about you. If you forget your place, then you misinterpret the purpose. It is not about you. And so let me tell you, why you are fulfilling that purpose, it might be unpleasant, uncomfortable. Jesus, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, was born in a manger. In a manger. Who do that? God! He can speak and the hotel will be built in a matter of seconds. It's a mysterious God. He can speak and all the people that were already occupied in the room they can begin to come out by themselves and say, eh, I come out, I surrender. Oh yeah, take your place, take your room. He can do it, but he did not. So why are you thinking it's about you? No. It was because for God so loved the world. He gave. Somebody says the true meaning of love is giving. If you can't give, you don't love. You must give and give that which is precious to you. That which is painful. Your comfort zone. Your respect. Everything that makes you up. You must be able to give. Because that's what the Lord gave. Let's see another prophecy in the book of Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28, 20. The mystery about the name Jesus we are talking about. It says, teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I have command you. And lo, I am with you, even unto the end of the world. So this is about one of the things that the Lord Jesus has given unto us, the commission, the instruction. That even as we are seated, even as we have believed the Lord, we are supposed to teach how to observe the truth. We are supposed to go out and tell other people. It's a nice thing to have gift is nice thing to have a beautifully decorated house is nice thing to have a christmas tree but the main reason is to command and to preach and to teach the gospel as i was preparing for this and then the lord brought to me quickly some things that were explained to me i know them before but god interpreted it to me in a different way i want you to pay attention quickly it says not philosophy but christ not philosophy but christ i came across this quote it says christ within us can accomplish what we can never hope to do in our own strength. And that continuous working with him will change the weakest of us into his image. The weakest of us. Have you ever watched that program called The Weakest Link? But 
When you are in Christ, it changes the weakest of you. And continuously walking in Him will bring out the best in you. But adventure, there is somebody here. Now you've known the reason why Jesus came to the world. Now you've known that your life is not about you. It's about the plan of God. And you're still struggling. You know how we just remember all the sins that we have committed. How we just remember all the mistakes we make in life. How we just remember our work that we have done. And we're like, oh no, that message is not for me. Because I've done so many bad things. But the strength of your weakest link is Jesus. The strength of your weakest link is Jesus. Is all you need. It's all you've got to take along with you every step of the way. Let's see the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 to 7 quickly. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 to 7. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. What is that instruction in that verse? What is the instruction to us? Walk. As ye have received Christ Jesus, so walk in him. It's not philosophy. It is about Christ. Walk in him. Verse 7 says, Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. By the special grace of God, we've been taught so many things in this house. And I know for those who are worshipping with us for the first time, wherever you are coming from, you have heard several times about the things, the commandment of God for your life, the instruction that he has for you. As you have been taught, we are supposed to be rooted. We are supposed to be built. Stop looking at the minor thing. Major on the most important thing about your life, which is Christ in you. Focus on that is your strength. Don't look at your weakness. I came across a book that says seven things about successful people. Is that successful people do not dwell on their weakness. They look at their strength, they focus on it. If you are still falling and rising, falling and rising, get up. Make up your mind you want to please God. You want to walk with him. It's there for us. That is the reason why he came for you. Irrespective of how big the world is. Yet, the Bible says God knows the number of strength of our hair. That's the God we are talking about. So don't begin to think about this God in a little way. He is big. Brethren, he is big. Very big. Very, very big. Let's see Colossians again. Verse 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. It says, Beware lest any man spoil your talk through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of man after the rudiment of the world and not after Christ. There are so many rudiments of the world. Part of the rudiment of the world is that Christmas is a time of gift. And then the store will take so much of our money that we have been saving. Because we have to give gifts. There's nothing wrong in giving gift, But when you're so sold out in giving gift, and you forget about the reason for giving gifts, then you're majoring on the minor. If you're careless about your life, about what you do, how you please your Savior, and you're so focused 
about, oh, I want this person to like me, or I want that person to like me. Let me tell you, you cannot give what you don't have. You got to have Christ. You got to have Christ. And then you can easily give that love that you are looking for. And don't look for something that you can't afford. You don't have it, you can give it, and then you expect it. That is all wrong. But then the only person that can make it right for us is Christ. Christ alone. In him we are complete. In him we have our being. In him we live. In him we do everything. Christ alone. That's all you need. He has your future. He has your past. He can correct your present. He can put it all together. Even though it's all broken. But you need to submit yourself to him. And let him have his way. In Christ you have forgiveness of sin. In Christ, we are being buried. The moment you say you give your life to the Lord Jesus, you accepted him as your personal and Lord and Savior, you die with him. Have you ever seen a dead person that is totally dead and somebody used a needle to the needle to poke on the dead person and the dead person jump up and say, no! Then that person is not dead. In fact, if that dead person jump up, you should run very far away. It's because if you say you are in Christ Jesus and you're totally dead, when somebody poke you, when it's not convenient, you don't react. If indeed you are truly dead, when someone insulted you, you don't fight back. When someone is trying to make your life miserable, it might, have, it might be silly to say, but you keep your cool. Because you are acting in Christ. You are complete in Christ. Your everything is in Christ. We are buried. We are baptized in Christ. Not carnality, but Christ. Remember we said not philosophy for Christ, but now not carnality, but Christ. What do we mean by carnality? Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 3 tell us something about that. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. It says, if ye then be in Christ, or be risen with Christ, Seek those things which are above. We are Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things on earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ. Remember how I gave the example of a dead person? Here I saying you are dead in Christ. And your life is hid in God. So when situation make you uncomfortable, you get on your nail, you pray till you have your breakthrough because your breakthrough is coming. It's just a matter of time. Not carnality. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 to 6. It says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate, affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For we are, for which things say the wrath of God, comment upon the children of disobedience. Those things that we've talked about, fornication, adultery, those are not Christ. Those are not Christ. Those are carnality. Those are things that make the power of God go far away from you. And you have to fulfill God's purpose for your life. Not because of you, but because of other people. Moses was born 
so that it can deliver the children of Israel. It wasn't for Moses. And you might say, oh, I'm not from the king's uh, tribe. I can't rule, I can't deliver anybody. Who says so? Do you know God's plan for your life? And so you have to do away with all carnality. You have to do away, do away with all adultery. You have to do away with fornication. You have to do away with sinful nature. Anything that is going to make the power of God not to come into fulfillment. Anything that will make you not to be complete in the reason for the season, which is Jesus. You're going to let it go. You can't take that with you to 2017. How long do you want to be a failure? You are not meant to be a failure. You are meant to rise, to shine. You are meant to glory in God. Obama didn't have to add. He started fulfilling destiny day by day, step by step. He was able to make history as the first black president in America. I don't know what history that God wants you to make. You're going to drop those sinful nature. You're going to drop them. Stop struggling. Jesus is the strength for your weakest link. You need to accept him. You need to be complete in him. Stop condemning yourself. Stop sorrowing in your mistakes. Wake up. Wake up. You've got a long journey. You've got a long journey. By his grace, you will fulfill that purpose. You are complete in Christ. Stop struggling. Stop thinking you can do this by your own. Stop it. You can't make it by that. You can only make it when you surrender to him. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. It says, And now, have put off on the new man, which has become new in knowledge after the image of his maker. Continue. Wherefore there is neither, is that Colossians chapter 3? Wherefore there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcised, barbarian, uh, Scythian, pardon my English, born nor free, but Christ is all in all. Go on. Put on their floor as the elect of God. I'm charging you this morning. Perhaps you don't know yourself. I want to remind you that you are the elect of God. And this is what God is asking you to do, even from today. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, balance of mercies. You're going to have a lot of mercies. All those judgmental spirits, condemnation spirits, you've got to drop it. You need the mercy of the Lord. If you want to receive mercy, you must be able to give mercy. Bowels of mercies, kindness, openness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Let's go on. For bearing one another. This is talking to couples, believers, family. For bearing one another. You have to bear, endure. Forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. As you go in 2017, you have to go with a heart of forgiveness, with a heart of forbearance, with a heart of love, with a heart of kindness. You have to know that for you to receive all this, you yourself have to give. You have to give those things. And then those things that you are expecting, the grace of God will make them to come to you. Not carnality. But these are the things the Lord, Jesus, 
that you're celebrating today is expecting from you, is expecting from me as we go into the year 2017. I want to wrap up this morning. I know I'm way, way past my time. Pastor will forgive me. I will give you a special dish tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As we wrap up this morning, brethren, I want us to look into Colossians chapter 3, verse 18 to 20. Find your place in Christ. You have to find your place in Christ. And part of finding our place in Christ is as a family, what it is that the Lord is expected of us. Because the family makes the church. The family makes the nation. The family makes the whole world. And we all have a place. Just like Christ fulfilled his purpose by coming. God, it came in human flesh. Just that he might deliver and save us. Your place in Christ. Wives, submit to your submit yourself unto your own husband. Pastor will always emphasize your own, your own first, your own husband. Then you can be nice to other men outside, but your own husband. And as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands loves your wives. And be not bitter against them. Be not bitter. Be not bitter. Oh God knows we're going to make your life miserable sometimes. God have mercy on women. Oh we're going to give you some headache. The Lord will help us. But it says be not bitter. Be not bitter against them. Pastor will always interpret it and tell us that if he says, Christ, uh, Husbands, love your wife, even as Christ loved the church. So the Bible is now referring the church to be the wife of Christ. But do you know that as much as the Lord loved, as Christ loved the church, the church is not free. Areas where the church is not free is the fact that the Bible expects us to live a holy life. We've learned about staying away from fornication, staying away from adultery. So what is it that I'm trying to say right now? Husbands, as your husband loves you, you've got to be submissive. I'm sorry to say, you are under the bondage of that man. You are not bound, but you are not free. The church is not free. Even though Christ loved the church. But there were instructions to the church. There were directions to the church. There were things that the church needed to do. So why is there are things that we need to do? But in the world we have is turned the way around. Now men ask to serve women. And men ask to idolize women. And that's why we have so many divorces in the church. Because it's turned the other way around. But from beginning, it was not so. From beginning, it was not so. Men need to love as Christ loved. Women need to submit. And they're not free. They're under the leadership and the instruction and the control of that man. You pray very well. Because once you make a decision to go into marriage, as a woman, you now under the control of the man. And may the Lord help the man to make the right decision in the name of Jesus. Children, I believe we have some instruction for children as well. Colossians chapter 3. Children, obey your own parents. Your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. What is the next one? 
Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Verse 22. Servants, obey in all things your own master according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleaser, but singleness of heart, fear in God. All of us have a place in Christ. There is a story of a woman of God. She found the servant of God, an evangelist, and so a servant, her husband, they went to visit. They were invited to a big crusade. And as they were walking towards the crusade ground, they began to hear noise, so much noise, and they were wondering, what is this murmuring and mumbling about? So somebody now moved close to her and said, actually open the curtain from under the pill, under the, the big tent that they have. The person opened the curtain and there they found about a dozen of women lying down, praying, praying. And then they now ask, who is the leader of this praying group? It was the wife of the evangelist. Very smallly, she came out and said, oh, by the special grace of God, we are praying for the success of this program. And the woman of God that was narrating that story said, I felt ashamed. He said, because that woman has found her place in God. She knows that her position is not to sit down and be recognized and be known. Our own position is to go and intercede for the success of the crusade. Your position in your family, in Christ, find it. Find it. Prayerfully find it and fulfill that position. Shall we rise on our feet? I am dying, oh Lord. I have heard thy voice and the spirit of your love to me. Consecrate me now to your service, Lord. And because I do. I want you to close your eyes and talk to the Lord and say, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Nearer, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord to the cross. to find my place in you. Father, I thank you for your gift to this world. I thank you for coming to die for my sin. I thank you, Lord Almighty, for your back. I thank you, Father, for fulfilling your purpose. And Lord, I pray this morning, help me to find my place in you. Help me to go and fulfill your plan, your purpose for my life. Help me if you have not received the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. Your own prayer is that Christ, please save my soul. Please save my soul. I don't want to struggle in the year 2017. I want to please save my soul. Father, help me in all my weaknesses. Help me in all my challenges. If you are finally here and you are struggling, I want to use this opportunity to pray. Jesus, help my household. Jesus, help my family. Help me to find my place in my family. Help me to forgive. Help me to be kind. Help me to be meek. Help me to be humble. If you are a wife, I want to pray. God, help me to be submissive to my husband. Help me to be submissive to my own husband. If you are a husband, I want to pray. Help me to love my wife. Help me to love as Christ love, unconditional. If you are a child, I want to pray. Help me to be obedient to my parents. Help me, oh God, as a servant, 
I want to pray. God help me to be faithful in my place of work, in everything that I do in the year 2017. I want to be complete in you. I want to be complete in you. Please help me. Help my weaknesses, oh God.